recording right? mm -hmm. transcription stopped okay so shall we start yes okay so yeah. thank you uh, so the next speaker for this session is uh, uh, bernard kurtz from uh, paderborn in germany and uh, well he'll speak on pelevinar theorems for irreducible representations yeah bernard thank you um okay um yeah um how shall i start uh, i i changed the topic a little bit um so i come to this promised thing a little bit later um okay um and uh, the first part will be on what i want to call factorization problems because it's closely re related to So this is uh, some very well classical thing. Um, so let's do some stupid stupid things first. So uh, we take A to be an algebra. Okay, let's not bother too much over the field. So let's take a, an algebra with the complex numbers, and uh, we take M to be an A module. So this means a uh, C vector space with an algebra action on that. And uh, we ask the question, um, does one have uh, A times M? Is M where A times M is, of course, the vector space of all products a times m a in a m in m and uh, is this yes that's a problem yeah um well of course i mean so you you say right away the answer is yes yeah if uh, uh, uh the identity is an A, um, and uh, the action is of course non-trivial, and uh, the action is non-trivial. Yeah, so so we are looking for algebras without a unit. Yeah, so in order to make this a uh, meaningful question so the natural assumptions are perhaps uh, from now on that uh, we request uh, that uh, one is not an a of course um, and um, so we request topologies So on A and M, such that this action which we uh, have uh, have here, so is is continuous. And uh, so we assume, I mean, maybe some non-degeneracy. So um, topologies and uh, uh, A times M in M is dense. Okay. And um, so now we ask, you know, is A M equals M? And of course the answer is then still no, but uh, sometimes it's yes. And uh, so we are interested in, in situation where the answer is yes. And uh, so let, let's start with some examples. So the most interesting case is uh, um, when M is A. Yeah, uh, and then we ask if everything is a, an, a, any element of A is a sum of squares. Yeah, and we ask for 
um, whether a squared, so a times a, yeah, equals a. And uh, so here, so the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. So of course this is not a mathematical um, assertion sometimes, but um, in any case, um, let's see um, examples here. So um, which are maybe a little bit illuminating. So H is a Hilbert space. And uh, then we have, um, well, um, for instance, K times H, the compact operators. So they have this property. And uh, this is, of course, because every uh, compact operator is a polar decomposition. And, uh, um, and then we can take a square root out of a positive self-adjoint operator. But um, if we would take Hilbert-Schmidt operators, um, then B2 of H, I think is a common notation, then this is contained in B1 of H. So the Hilbert-Schmidt operators is also an algebra um, with continuous. So these are the Hilbert-Schmidt operators and uh, these are the trace class operators. And um, yeah, and this inclusion is strict. As we know, um, the inclusion is strict. if and only if um, the dimension of H is infinite. Okay, um, so these are examples of uh, the theory of operator algebras, um, but now we come to these examples which interest us. So this is B, so we take A, for instance, uh, the test functions, on the real line. Um, or more generally, so we take for A to be the test functions on a Lie group. So, um, well, but we don't take the stupid algebra multiplication, so pointwise multiplication, so we take uh, um, the algebra structure under convolution. Okay, um, perhaps, I don't know, uh, probably it's not necessary. Unimodular. Um, so, and um, so then it's interesting. So then, then we have here, for instance, uh, test functions convolved with test functions is the test functions again. So this is a non-trivial statement. Um, so that any test function is uh, a finite sum of convolution. And so what, this just for the real line, I mean, gives an essence, and maybe I want to explain this a little bit. Um, a very strong factorization result, and uh, um, which stayed, uh, you know, quite a while unnoticed, uh, and now became quite popular. And this is the theorem of uh, Dixme and Maliavan. So, um, let me explain that. I mean, some sort of, uh, what, what, what are the assumptions here? So, the assumptions are, okay, so we have uh, a continuous action on a fresh heat space. So, um, G, we, 
So G acts on V. So sometimes, I mean, if you wish, you can also write here pi of G for, for something like that. So this is a continuous action and E should be fresh A. So this is a continuous representation or continuous action. And uh, E is any fresh A space. Okay, so test functions are not quite a fresh space, but uh, um, in any case. Um, and uh, so the next um, thing what we need is uh, uh, some notation perhaps. So E infinity are the so-called smooth vectors. And uh, smooth vectors, um, this means uh, those V and E for which um, an, an orbit map, I mean, uh, well, let's give it a name, FV from G to E. So this is an E-valued map. Um, G goes to G times V. And uh, we can say whether this is smooth, yeah? So this is uh, some very abstract but very useful concept. Uh, um, and uh, then it is easy to see so that we have some mollifying. So, so I write, this is a typical notation, um, is in E infinity. So what does it mean? Um, so I want to explain that, um, so you take a test function and uh, you take a vector here. And if you have an action of a group, I mean, um, and, and then we can, uh, produce something pi of phi v, so this group algebra representation, and this is what we just define, defined like that. And, and what is this? So we integrate um, phi of g, pi of g, v, and then this is the left Haar measure. So, okay, you assume unimodular, then it doesn't matter. Um, it's like that. Um, so this is a vector valued integration, and since phi um, has compact support, and um, um, so th this is um, phi of g times fv of g. So an fv was, uh, um, um, action was continuous, so this is a continuous function, yeah, in terms of g, so th this, this um, um, uh, converges vector valued, and since E was a fresh space, you can take the Riemann, Riemann sums, and then, so this is a convergent object, and uh, um, so this respects convolution, so um, pi of phi star psi is then pi of phi times pi of psi, okay. And um, so if phi was a smooth function, I mean, then you can shuffle the derivatives. I mean, some sort of since the measure was uh, invariant um, from the vector to the test functions, and then you, you, you obtain th this mollifying property. This is what one calls mollifying, yeah, I guess. Yeah, um, so what was what is then the assertion of Dixme Maliava? The assertion is uh, that this is actually an equality. So and uh, um, so when we apply the test functions to to any Frechet representation E, we obtain E infinity. So anything uh, which is smooth is obtained from mollifying. Yeah, um, so let me give some remarks here. So, well, if you have something which is smooth, um, 
um, and it was fresh. Then E infinity is again fresh, so it's like all derivatives. And the smooth of smooth is smooth, so nothing changes here. So um, then we also obtain a factorization thing, yeah, for E infinity. So you remember our initial setting A M is M, yeah. So A is then the test function algebra M is E infinity. So we uh, obtain, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, th this things here. So let me just put this back. Um, okay. Um, and uh, so examples for that um, here is, for instance, C, C infinity of R, and now you take um, well some representation. The representation of R itself on the standard swatch base gives then S of R, and of course, uh, in particular for the Schwartz functions also that any because the test functions contain the Schwartz functions is this type of thing. And um, so. It is interesting to see. Um, so Dixme Maliava is is really something for the real line. Um, so you can obtain something for um, for a whole Lie group. You know this types of thing by re so there's a reduction from G to R. So this is the first thing. So this is not really difficult. And uh, so yesterday I was looking in um, an overview article or a summary of the Dixme Maliava, and this is uh, by Bill Kasselman. So um, if you want to look at this by Kasselman of uh, Dixme Maliava. It's a very nice text, beautiful text. Okay, um, so let me. So I, I, I said, you know, some sort of uh, this. This comes from um, test functions. So let let's let's give at least some idea. You know, some what, what was known classically. I mean, some sort of um, uh, a weaker result and longer known was uh, that uh, CK, um, excuse me, so this is just for the um, CCK of R, so compactly supported K times continuously differentiable functions applied to E infinity is E infinity. So, so E is just a representation for R, so this means it's a one parameter group. And uh, um, so this type of factorization, and let, let us just see that, I mean, some sort of, and this is then for all K in N, or N zero if one was. And um, the, the idea here is, and this was then refined, was a representation of the delta distribution, which you can write, you know, in the following form um, with compact supports, so these are the standard derivatives um, for functions fj and uh, fj is something test of the order one less and uh, so you can actually make the supports of fj as small as you want yeah so um, th this is some standard uh, presentation it's m more or less i mean some um, playing around with the fact that um, that the, the the delta distribution is the derivative of the heavy side, and then you take a certain one-sided cutoff of the heavy side, and then you multiply the powers of x, and then you 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 obtain that. So um, and now, um, if we have such a smooth vector for one parameter group, say v is in E infinity, um, then we can write v. And also, I mean, you have an action of compactly supported measures. I mean, some sort of uh, on any continuous representation. So um, then this is delta zero star V. I mean, any any measure with compact support acts 
Yeah, so this is then pi of g applied to v d mu of g. And uh, so the measures, um, um, I mean, as special cases of compactly supported distributions, um, then also form an algebra. Um, and now we plug in uh, the representation of uh, of delta. And then we have here the DD axis, I mean, FJ applied to V. And, uh, um, and now I basically uh, shuffle the derivatives, I mean, to the other side. Um, I think this should be something like that. Perhaps there's some minus uh, to the one to the J. Doesn't matter. So, um, but the derivative of a smooth vector is again a smooth vector. So this is an E infinity. And uh, so, um, and I convolve with something, I mean, which has compact support. Um, then um, I obtain that this is uh, again, here a smooth vector. So this is also smooth. So what I more or less, okay. Um, um, used here um, was if MC of G is uh, um, compactly supported Borel measures and uh, I apply that to E infinity and this is contained in E infinity. So we come to some more general assertion than later. So this is more or less clear the, the, the support is compact. I mean, you can differentiate under the integral sign. Um, so you can um, commute, I mean, differentiation and integration. I mean, this is this is uh, what is in here. OK, um, so this was uh, uh, some very classical result and then uh, a, a refinement. And maybe this I don't want to discuss here. Um, uh, a refinement of 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 that. So some sort of uh, quantitative version with k equals infinity and certain constants, um, then leads to um, the factorization result um, gives another representation of the delta function, and uh, gives then. Um, um, the dix may malleable theorem in general. OK, um, as I said, OK, this is really beautifully written up, I mean, in Kasselmann's uh, um, summary. So I don't want to discuss it here. So maybe it is just some appetizer for the younger ones to 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 look at this, to look at this article. OK. So this was smooth vectors, and uh, then there's uh, another topic. Um, maybe let's call it analytic vectors. And now we want to factorize not smooth vectors, so we want to factorize analytic functions. And uh, then we need algebras of analytic functions. OK, so what is the setup here? So E is... Uh, um, yeah, um, what do I say? I mean, um, yeah, uh, so any complete locally convex space. Um, yeah, um, so completeness is, is always necessary, you know, that we can do some uh, to some vector valued integration. And so, so we have here a, a Lie group and uh, um, then we have a representation as before. And um, yeah, so I want to talk about analytic vectors and in order to do that, um, so it is useful. So without a loss of generality, so we assume that G is uh, embedded in its complexification. Um, so th this is 
typically always the case unless you take some non-trivial covering groups of SL2. I mean, then this is not possible, but uh, typically it's yes. It's not needed, but it makes it a little bit easier. And, um, and uh, E omega, so this are the, uh, the, the, the vectors F and E such that this orbit map, which we had before, is analytic. And what do I mean with analytic? So this G is first of all a real manifold. So this means that it has an holomorphic extension. So this means um, meaning the following. Um, so V is an E omega if and only if there exists um, an open neighborhood of one, let's call it U in GC. Okay, so this is a very stupid picture, but uh, um, here's one, and this should be our curved manifold G, and uh, which is embedded in GC, which should be then the plane, and uh, um, This is U, and um, well, multiplication in G is analytic. So analytic basically means analytic near the identity, and uh, so what we then request is um, so V is analytic if there exists an open neighborhood such that um, F V this orbit map extends to a holomorphic map to an element in first of all in so o stands for holomorphic functions and uh, g times u um, so this is then basically i mean just uh, this tube which you obtain by translating it along with g so this is then g times u and uh, so this is a a, a holomorphic function and uh, well, one can even say more. Um, so it has to be G equivariant, yeah, because the the orbit map satisfies uh, F V of G times V is G times F of V. Yeah. So um, and this lower index G should basically then indicate uh, this equivariance. Yeah, so in other words, um, now I have to go to a new page. So this uh, this E omega is... Actually, use, sir, usually this power phase representation for this definition of analytic vector, you need E banner space or what? Or uh, that is oh, equivalent? No. Hello? No, I mean, in order to talk about uh, um, uh, here, actually, I wouldn't even need completeness. Uh, I, I can basically talk for any topological vector space. Yeah. Um, so, analyticity, I mean, some sort of is just what I said. I mean, it's just a, a holomorphic extension. And holomorphic extension means complex differentiability. And when E is the Banach space, that agrees with that usual definition. This power series representation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, and this is the, this actually, this definition uh, do not need that. Uh, so this, this definition actually resolves that uh, convergence issue in Banach space. Yeah. Um, okay, I was, uh, just looking in uh, the setup in Rudin's book, Functional Analysis, Theorem 331. And uh, so he talks about Frechy spaces here uh, in order to speak of um, vector valid holomorphic functions. Uh, I think uh, this is. Uh, 
possible setup here. Um, but uh, I think uh, so. The way I defined it here is 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 just uh, that it has a holomorphic extension, and uh, um, and then it 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 also has a a, a power series expansion. Uh, because I mean, if it has a holomorphic extension, I mean some sort of uh, then then uh, I can define derivatives, and then there's Taylor and so on, and uh, um, um, uh, this is all included here. I don't okay, think so that, yeah, yes. but I'm saying that if E is not a Banach space, then probably power series uh, definition will not really be that much useful actually, because the no, no. Is the thing is, look, I mean. Um, power series definition, I mean, you have to say, I mean, it's convergent. I mean, some sort of for any continuous seminar on the space. Yeah. OK. And, okay, okay. Yeah. So th this okay. is what it is. I mean, some sort of uh, uh, it, th this is just not working with one norm. I mean, some sort of so it's for for any continuous seminar. OK, so but but this is not really of of of, uh, uh, of relevance. Um, what is it here? OK, um, good. Uh, so there was a uh, here. Um, yeah, so we we basically um, have uh, E omega is then um, a union um, of uh, what's called E. So maybe I call this the, the vectors which extend holomorphically to U. And uh, then this is an increasing union. I mean, for uh, the the neighborhood, I mean, shrinking to one, or sometimes one writes this as uh, an inductive limit of EU. Yeah. So, and this is the topology. I mean, some sort of uh, you put on E omega. So these are then more difficult topologies. I mean, some sort of they are no longer freshy topologies. So, um, but. What is here again? I mean, some sort of uh, is for all, um, say, freshy representations. So, and compactly supported meshes. Um, so, E alpha is in E alpha, where alpha is either the symbol. Smooth. This is what we just had there, or we had here, omega. So, um, so this is not changed. I mean, so you can. This is again. I mean, some sort of. Uh, um, you can differentiate under the integral sign. I mean, Cauchy's integral formula holds, and um, this is what you obtain. Okay. Um, so now we basically ask here, and this is some. Stuff I mean, which I did more than ten years ago. Um, the natural question is: uh, Does there exist an algebra a of g, yeah, such that um, say a of g applied to e? So for any Banach representation, is e omega say uh, for, so probably it's for all freshy. No, so for all now, okay, for all E Banach. This can be extended a little bit. I mean, to what we call F representation. But uh, uh, so so this is what we what we ask. So so um, to put it in contrast, I mean, so the Dix May Malleva thing was the was this um, E is E infinity. And uh, now we basically ask for for an algebra whether something like that exists. Yeah, and in fact it does. And uh, let me explain. So this is then not um, a situation um, which reduces to the real line anymore, uh, because in for a Lie group, I mean you can reduce things to to the real line because you can. Compactly supported functions, you know, with small support, you can pull back um, to with the exponential function to the Lie algebra, and uh, then you can take a basis of the Lie algebra, and uh, then you can um, basically do it 
dimension by dimension, you know, coordinate by coordinate. And uh, so, for for instance, if you take a, a measure, a compactly supported measure, which is smooth on the x1 axis, and you convolve it with the same thing, which is smooth and compactly supported on the x2 axis, um, you will get a compactly supported smooth measure, you know, some sort of on the x1, x2 plane, and then you can, can continue that. But this type of thing, I mean, doesn't work, I mean, uh, because analytic functions, I mean, are not compactly supported. I mean, this cannot be localized. So um, this is then not an issue so much um, um, for, uh, for the real line so that you need the more general concepts here. But in any case, it does. And uh, so um, there is some Schwartz algebra, which I'm going to define later. So it's not the familiar Schwartz algebra. And uh, so I will define it in in a in a couple of minutes. I mean, for a reductive group, and uh, but it is what it is. If if G is the additive group of the real line, then this is um, C infinity of R. And uh, so for all J indices and for all alpha. Um, so you want to have that the uh, the soup. Um, of this is finite. So these are functions. I mean, some sort of like the Gaussians would be, for instance, such a function which which is in there. So um, of arbitrary exponential decay. And uh, th this is needed, you know, if you want to have the, the algebra act on any representation. A yeah, representation of R, as I said, is a one parameter group and one parameter groups grow exponentially. So if I want to have a function, yeah, some sort of uh, acting on a vector which grows exponentially, in order that this vector valued integral converges, the function better is, you know, of uh, arbitrary exponential decay. And precisely this is what's requested here. So this is not um, the, the typical Schwartz space where you would take here one plus absolute value of x to any power of alpha, so you take here any uh, 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 all that. So, so th th this guarantees uh, that this acts. So S of R then itself is a representation for the for the group R itself for the additive group. So this is a module. Okay, so this is the commutative group, and then um, then you would take for a of r, you would take the analytic vectors for this action. So this is a freshy uh, 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 representation, and uh, so it's like that. And then you have here um, a of r, or if you take the analog definition, I mean for g, then you actually have that um, to be um, e omega. So this was uh, uh, a joint result with uh, um, two of my doctoral students back then uh, in Hannover, uh, joined with, uh, with Heiko, with Gimperlein and Christoph. Uh, Christoph Linau. So this was quite interesting um, um, to see that. So, um, and here you need uh, some sort of uh, some symbolic calculus, and it was uh, some unexpected application of uh, yeah um, a calculus for the wave operator of Giga Gromov and Taylor. Okay, so this was uh, two type of factorization problems which naturally appear. Uh, here and uh, so also here one has uh, a of g convolved with a of g is a of g. Um, yeah. Good. Now um, I want to come to a different topic or a related topic, I mean, which uh, are even much stronger factorization um, issues. I mean, um, and this is related to, to what's called uh, Harris Chandler modules. So globalization of 
So I would like to explain this this headline here. Um, so G is uh, here RRG, a real reductive group, and for us uh, uh, that is um, G is uh, some subgroup of GLNR which uh, satisfies three things. Uh, it's closed, finitely many components. So we don't take things like SLN set, for instance. Yeah, so this is not allowed. Um, and uh, so uh, transposition stable, I mean stable under the Cartan involution. G and so inverse transpose. So, um, yeah, so this should be it. I mean, some sort of for us. And then uh, um, we, um, so there's some embedding, yeah, so which has this property. Um, this is, of course, not some intrinsic, but if this is the case, I mean, then for any other embedding, it is has the same property. Um, and so then we take here the maximum of uh, the operator norm. I mean, if you want to, to, to write for this, there's some inclusion. So then this is the operator norm of I of G and uh, maybe G inverse. Um, so this norm depends on I, but um, any other embedding, I mean, will give a norm which is equivalent, so may, meaning it's dominated by some power of, of that. Okay, so this this norm depends on I, but this object, I mean, uh, this is the so-called Kasselmann-Schwarz algebra, S of G does not. Um, so, and why is that? I mean, because all powers are then involved. So we take functions, I mean, which uh, are decaying very fast. So we take here all derivatives. U of G is the universal enveloping algebra. And uh, so you take a function f, I mean, uh, and then you can differentiate on the left as much as you want and uh, differentiate on the right as much as you want. Yeah, and uh, um, then this should be still decaying very fast. And so it means uh, against any power, all n and n, and here we have to take the absolute value. So this is the soup definition. And that this stays finite. Yeah, so this is the fresh space uh, under convolution, and this is what's called uh, the kasselmann schwarz algebra. Uh, And again, I mean, some sort of this thing naturally acts on any representation because representations, I mean, basically have, this is what one would call polynomial growth in this situation. Um, so this this acts on, on any Banach representation. So S of G acts on any Banach representation. E of G, so um, so, um, and then you have here S of G by Dixme Maliava. I mean, some sort of when you apply that, uh, so this is E infinity because the Schwarz space, of course, contains the test functions. But uh, the, there is actually Banach representation means you have polynomial growth. And this condition guarantees, I mean, that also the vector valued integrals for S uh, converge. Okay. So, this much to that. Um, then there's the typical player is, uh, so we had uh, this Cartan involution, G theta, theta of G being G minus transpose. So this means um, the, the uh, orthogonal matrices yeah. Um, 
when we embedded G in our group GLNR in such a large group. And uh, this is then uh, a maximal compact subgroup. Good. Um, and uh, when we have here for E any representation, on a complete locally convex vector space, CLCV. Um, then we can, of course, uh, then talk about K-types because this projecting on a K-type is a vector valued projection and we have here smooth um, vectors which are smooth and K-finite. So um, both, they should be both and then because uh, things, this is what one calls, okay, this is what one gives what's called a GK module. I don't want to define it. So G is the Lie algebra. So on smooth vectors, I mean, you can differentiate as much as you want. Yeah, so this means that. And uh, um, K mod, so GK module means that any vector, I mean, some sort of lies in the finite dimensional subspace, but this is then given by K finiteness. And um, of course, I mean, you can first translate with K and then differentiate with an element of X. And then of course the group K acts on the Lie algebra G by the edge joint action. And this should be all compatible. And then this gives what's called GK module. Okay. and. Um, so um, yeah, what is then the Harish Chandra module? So this is, uh, it's called B, it's called the GK module. It's called um, Harish Chandra module provided that two conditions hold. Um, so the action, I mean, some sort of any vector should be K finite. Yeah, so this is, uh, um, um, but we want to have condition one. I mean, what's called V is admissible. So this means the K multiplicities uh, that is um, for all irreducible representations of this compact group K. I mean, so they are all finite dimensional and all home spaces um, is the dimension of the home space. I mean, how often does tau get into V? This is limited. And uh, the second thing is, um, V is finitely generated as a module for G. So maybe for the universal, for this algebra as a UJ G module. And uh, so two is, so given one, I mean, you can, one can replace two by, um, finiteness um, three, so um, so V is finite and uh, um, set of G. So this here is the center of the universal enveloping algebra. So for SL2 is just uh, the polynomial algebra and the Casimir operator. So, and um, then um, let me call um, E, so a CL, so uh, a Harris Chandra representation provided 
such that uh, I will use the notation now. Maybe it's not uh, so the smooth K finite vectors is the Harris Chandra module. Okay. Um, and um, so this theorem is motivated by um, yeah this very surprising deep deep result. I mean, it's motivated. by um, <clears throat> so um, if pi h was uh, unitary irreducible um, then just the k finite vectors and they are automatically smooth um, Is a Harris Chandra module. Yeah, um, so this is uh, the, um, the definition, I mean, of a Harris Chandra representation. So this was the result by Harris Chandra. So, in other words, I mean, some sort of in order to appreciate that. So you have a representation of G. So pi is a representation of G. And then you screen it under. A maximal compact group K. And um, under the screening, I mean, Peter Weil tells you, I mean, some sort of this falls into blocks like a, a function, I mean, falls into this Fourier series. And uh, so then for each block, I mean, some sort of the blocks parametrized by um, the elements of K hat, I mean, the irreducible representations of K, which are all finite dimensional. <clears throat> yeah, there's only finite multiplicities, so it, it decomposes into finite blocks. And this is uh, uh, not at all clear, I mean, um, such that something like that holds. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, what's called um, a Harris Chandra, what we will want to call a Harris Chandra representation. So uh, um, there's some subtleties in this notion. That's why I defined it like that. I mean, not any. So this assertion here becomes wrong. I mean, if you just take a Banach representation, then this is false. And the reason for that is uh, um, that there's one parameter groups um, on infinite dimensional Banach spaces, uh, which don't have non trivial subspaces. Yeah, so this invariant subspace problem. And um, so that's why, I mean, if you talk in the in the general concept, I mean, so you cannot just talk about irreducible Banach representations, so you have to request admissibility. Yeah, so um, otherwise, I mean, we don't have a good theory. Um, yeah, um, and then comes uh, this uh, remarkable result. I mean, some sort of uh, um, uh, this theorem, I mean, of um, Castleman and Wallach. So this means uh, if E is a Banach. Harris Chandra representation, so the K finite vectors uh, is Harris Chandra module. And uh, then we always call V. Um, this is then automatically smooth, but K finite, if you want, you can put this in. And uh, so this is now a space of countable dimension. Yeah. Then the Schwartz algebra applied to V. Equal, so this is a way how you can phrase it. Yeah, so notice, um, so this is by, um, so what we always want here, note, I mean, V is uh, an algebraic sum.
of tau isotypical components. And uh, these are all finite dimensional. And K hat is parameterized by the highest weights of kata and weil. I mean, this is also countable. So it's a space of countable dimension. Countable dimension and uh, um, also contained in the in the analytic vectors. Yeah. So now you basically this this basically says any smooth function in some sense. I mean, you obtain by convolution with a uh, of a Schwartz function with a polynomial. I say in a very um, crude approximation here. So. And th th this more or less says, I mean, some sort of there's uh, up to isomorphy, only uh, one smooth structure. Um, so for any Banach representation, I mean, some sort of the smooth vectors are the same. Um, so I don't want to go into that here. Um, and uh, so now you can ask uh, um, corresponding results uh, for. <coughs> For analytic vectors, yeah, okay. So maybe uh, I'm pretty far in the talk. Um, yeah, uh, so there was it's called Castleman Wallach, and maybe some anecdote here. I mean, uh, I think then they had a conflict, and uh, so. Um, I think they they worked together on this project, and but then there was different publications um, of this result. Um, so the uh, treatment of Kasselmann was in the Canadian Journal, and the treatment of Wallach was um, in the Real Reductive Groups Volume Two. And uh, yeah, in some sense, I mean these were papers which were difficult to read. Um, and to understand and uh, but since this is uh, such a fascinating result i mean some sort of um, i wanted to understand this differently and um, yeah um, then we had here uh, another proof i mean some sort of together with, with joseph bernstein and with whom i collaborated collaborated on that so we have here um yeah, we made it very elementary in some sense. And um, yeah, so I think uh, with that, I lost the favor of, of Nolan Wallach. Um, so uh, I, in some sense, um, he thought that we were taking away a result of him, but of course uh, this was never uh, our intention. And um, so this is of course the result of Kasselmann Wallach. We just gave a different proof and then um yeah so he was I don't know um people sometimes behave a little bit like little children. So he, he thought that we probably want to take away from him, but what was never the case. And then it was uh, so uh as it is often with him, I mean, some sort of uh, uh, what's in his books is not so correct um, um, sometimes, and uh, so he he had to to write um, some some addendum to that, so uh, to fix some gaps in in in, in his proof, and um, then he was uh, yeah um, dreaming about his theorem, and he was comparing it um, with uh, the prime number theorem. So this is for him such an important result. I mean, um, in the theory of representation, so that he compared this globalization, this kasselmann wallach theorem, with the prime number theorem. And um, and so then he said about the prime number theorem that there are different proofs, and of course there is the ingenious proof of Adama, and um, which um, the analyst proof. And um, and uh, then there's of course um, the ugly proof, yeah, uh, of Selberg with uh, Selberg, um, you know, developed his big sieve method, and uh, you know Bernstein and me were the people giving the ugly proof, you know, not the essence and so on, where he was the good guy, 
in any case, uh, um, um, well, Salberg at least got the Fields Medal for that. And, um, um, you know, so I just wanted to tell you that. Um, um, so as an anecdote, okay, now comes the last part of the talk. Uh, it's becoming uh, a little bit more technical. Um, I'm almost through one hour. Um, um, maybe it will take another 15 minutes or so um, for those who want to stay um, uh, and listen to uh, these technicalities. Um, I hope that this is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and what is A of G? I mean, A of G is then just uh, um, the analytic vectors of S of G. To be quite correct, one should write omega omega, I guess, um, because you have a left and right action. And um, so the method, I mean, which we developed, I mean, with Joseph, um, of Bernstein and myself, um, then um, yielded also, I mean, that uh, A of G applied to V, so is E omega. So, um, this is another thing, and this was then done, I mean, some sort of uh, um, with uh, uh, Gimpelein and Schlichkroll. And behind that is uh, um, what we wanted to prove, or we wanted to give another alternative proof of something stronger. And uh, the stronger result is uh, the globalization theorem of Schmidt. So Wilfried Schmidt, uh, a retired professor now in Harvard, and uh, this is uh, something when you apply the test functions to this countable space of polynomials, so this Harris-Chandra module, you obtain all analytic vectors. I mean, so this structure is more or less unique. I mean, some sort of, uh, so we could basically write V omega as being the uh, so Kasselmann Wallach basically says up to isomorphy, there's only one smooth model. So smooth Frisch model of moderate growth, and then you would take the analytic vectors there. Um, and so what Schmidt realized is, uh, so he was interested in that because uh, then this gives, uh, implies right away um, what was called the Helgerson conjecture. So about that Poisson transforms, I mean, on Riemannian symmetric spaces, uh, that um, any eigenfunction is um, the Poisson transform of a hyperfunction on the boundary. Um, so the, it, it is not really difficult to translate it uh, um, or to, to, to relate it to that. And, um, so again, I mean, Schmidt published this result and uh, um, without a proof in some asterisk thing. And um, so the original proof of Schmidt was never published. I mean, he told me once so that it was very complicated. And uh, uh, and then he had some other approaches. I mean, some sort of with Kashiwara. So they, they wrote some article on that, but it also stayed very sketchy. Um, um, but in any case, uh, I'm not an expert in this thing, so I, uh, uh, but this is difficult to, to understand, uh, to say the least. Um, so then we, I wanted always to understand this result of Schmidt. I mean, some sort of that any analytic vector is obtained by convolution. Okay. Um, so this was some, so what I was thinking about quite some time, I mean, so maybe some remark here. 
So this Schmidt's identity, let's call it SI. Um, SI is equivalent to um, the um, compactly supported distribution typically called E prime of G applied to V is E omega. And uh, yeah, um, so how is that? I mean, some sort of, uh, um, because of, this is something um, which is useful to, um, to do here. Um, for all V in V, I mean, you will find a test function of arbitrary small support. So V is a K finite vector. So I can take K times K finite function. And uh, so since on any K type, you move in, in, a, in a finite dimensional fashion, uh, you can use direct approximation. So this was a trick of Harish Chandra, which he always did over and over again. So um, such a vector, this is the reason, I mean, admissibility, I mean, uh, comes in, I mean, can be written with the convolution of a K times K finite function. Yeah. And uh, so then when you then take a compactly supported distribution and apply it to V, and we know that, so this phi, of course, depends on V. Yeah. So it's like, uh, um, so this is that, and then this is associative. But if I apply a compactly supported distribution, you know, on a test function, I get a test function. Um, and uh, so this is here. And what is the advantage of that? I mean, on a philosophical level, and this is what uh, what we used later then is, um, I mean, you cannot compute the Fourier transform of a test function. This is impossible. Yeah, uh, you will don't find it in the in the analysis books. Yeah, so there's of course the Pay Levine theorem, um, but in in some sense it's the most unconcrete theorem um, in existence because never nobody can compute the Fourier transform of a test function, except for the zero function, of course. Um, but what you can compute is the Fourier transform of the characteristic function of an interval, yeah, and you get sine x over x or something like that. And this is the reason, I mean, some sort of it's more flexible um, to, to work with compactly supported distributions because Pay-Levine theory is, is easier and then you can make concrete constructions, I mean, in Pay-Levine space. Okay, so this was just a side remark. Um, yeah, so how do you approach this? I mean, how to approach? Um, yeah, um, so you can First of all, I mean, your representation can be assumed because you're taking analytic vectors and analytic vectors is taking the analytic vectors of the smooth vectors first. I mean, some sort of, uh, you can take E to be the smooth model of your Harris Chandra module. And uh, so this is the, uh, the first thing. Um, then there's a reduction to spherical principle series. Um, um, such that um, the generating VK, I mean, so this is the generator of the K fixed vectors, so um, is cyclic. So the, The K fixed vector is a one dimensional space, so this means spherical principle series. And uh, so it's cyclic for the, uh, is cyclic for 
the universal enveloping algebra in V. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, always con satisfied. I mean, if uh, uh, the real part of the parameter is so, so to speak, positive, it's a condition of constant. Okay. Um, so these are kind of standard techniques. I mean, some sort of this is then in essence a, 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 um, a result for principle series. Um, and um, yeah, then you work in the compact picture. And um, you work in the compact picture. And um, so this means V as a K module is just the polynomials on K mod M. So at this point of the talk, um, I assume what M is. Did you know that? So then V infinity is the smooth functions on K mod M. And V omega is the analytic functions on K mod M. Yeah, um, this is what it is. And then you have here an action of G. Depending on a parameter. Lambda in a C star. Yeah. Um, so this is the principle series. And um, so now you basically ask, uh, so given such a, a V, given V in V, um, um, we want to find a test function um, um, excuse me, V in V. So given an analytic vector, you want to find a test function such that this test function applied to the K finite vector. Yeah. And then this is this action depending on Lambda. Maybe there's a representation. So if you want, you can put here a Lambda. Um, so a pi lambda, the principal series of parameter applied to this vector vk, yeah, is given b. So, um, so these are very complicated convolutions with this Poisson kernel and so on, depending on a parameter lambda. And uh, um, is this possible? And can I give a construction? Um, can I actually produce a concrete function which does that? Okay, um, let's do an example. So G is just the two by two matrices of determinant one. K is SO2. M is plus minus one. K mod M is then the circle S1. And uh, so now we basically pick an analytic vector on the circle. This means uh, V is A and C N. And uh, analytic means, I mean, it extends a little bit in an analysis uh, such that um, um, a n is smaller than r to the n for some r bigger than one. And in other words, uh, um, um, r, excuse me, smaller than one. Yeah, so in other words, I mean, uh, V lies is a holomorphic function in some annulus uh, AR, one over R, um, with this annulus um, 
being um, Yeah, so this is this ring uh, around the circle. And uh, so this is more or less, I mean, the, the filtration also of the analytic vectors um, on the circle. And uh, in other words, I mean, this, this analytic vector C omega of S1 is uh, the holomorphic functions of A R1 over R and uh, r um, going up to one. Yeah, so the NLI becomes smaller and smaller, and uh, the space of holomorphic function then becomes bigger and bigger. And uh, so now you can ask an even more concrete question. Yeah. Um, so given Um, such a function, I mean, which is on the circle, which is on such an analyze, um, I want to find an R positive, yeah, and uh, a test function with support of in G of radius R. So here you basically write G is K A plus K. I mean, this Cartan decomposition, you take uh, the Cartan killing norm on A, you obtain a notion of radius um, on the group G. Um, this is this radius here. Um, so I want that. I mean, some sort of, and such that F applied to, to, to this K fixed vector is V. And uh, the answer is, uh, and this is some sort of, um, um, there exists a, a C positive, yeah, only depending on G. Um, such that for all R positive with, so what is this log R squared? I had to look it up. So if R is large enough so that this is smaller than C times R, R was the little R was the quality of this analytic vector. Uh, then one has um, applied to V contains O A R one over R. So anything I mean some sort of which extends the analysis. So an analysis uh, of radius little r is obtained by convolution with something from big R uh, with support in radius big R. So provided this this condition, which I put here in a box. So something very concrete. And uh, Pelevina is uh, what we say for Harris Chandler modules is uh, this what's called NLI. I mean, you can make a notion of that. I mean, so for any K mod M, this is not difficult. And uh, so then you have surroundings of uh, uh, NLI around K mod M. I mean, some sort of you can measure the quality of an analytic vector, how far it extends around K mod M. So the, this radius little r. And then um, um, you also have a filtration in terms of uh, um, the support of the test functions. And then you want to relate this little r to the big r. So, um, but this is somehow the more interesting inclusion here. And this, uh, this, is, the, this is the one, I mean, which implies Schmidt's identity, yeah? because any analytic vector is in some annulus of of radius little r, and now we basically gave here a bound, yeah, so that it's obtained by convolution with something um, with support in grade r. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh. Okay, I apologize. I mean, uh, so Veluma, if it's too much, I mean, since just 
just stop me. Um, um, so, but maybe uh, for the experts now, now I'm talking more to the experts. Okay, uh, so I was hearing my own voice. Uh, was mirrored. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So the question is, I mean, how can I construct such an F? I mean, how do I get this? Um, and now the approach here was uh, by the Helgerson's version. I mean, there is no Fourier transform of Helgerson, but uh, um, just to say it once again, but there's a Pelevina theorem. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, of Helgerson, and uh, um, so there's the Fourier transform of the test functions with support in G mod K is uh, the paley wiener space. So for SL2, so this is just the complex numbers with values in C infinity, I mean here in the circle. And um, um, so there's an index R and then there's uh, maybe here W and this curly W, this stands for the Weil group. And um, <coughs> so this is the Fourier transform and this, uh, um, this was a result of a very interesting result of Helgerson. Um, let me explain. Um, so for um, SL2, so this means uh, F is in the in the Pelevina space, um, say of C, yeah, and C infinity of the circle with radius R. This means uh, F is a function um, such that F of lambda um, of set is, so to speak, So in other words, you obtain power series which depend on lambda, yeah, a n of lambda, I mean some sort of, and this should be uh, a function, I mean some sort of, uh, which is holomorphic, um, f lambda of set, I mean some sort of um, um, vector valued, yeah. And it should satisfy, I mean, a paley condition and the paley condition is, uh, so you take one plus lambda to the power n, um, e to the minus r imaginary part of lambda. And uh, then you have here f, but not f of, as a f of lambda. f of lambda is vector valued, yeah? Now I cannot take the absolute value, so I have to take here any continuous seminorm. Super. So this is finite. So in this here, Q is uh, any continuous seminorm on this fresh space on the circle. Okay, so in other words, you take a derivative as much as you want and you take the Sobolev norm. Um, so um, this is what's Paley-Wiener space so this is very classical, just vector valued. Yeah, so and this is the typically Paley-Wiener growth condition. Um, and, uh, but there's some other thing here. So um, there's an index and this stands for a symmetry. And um, this is for the Y group and the, the Y group stands for the symmetry. Um, in this case, the Y group is just two elements. Um, one W, excuse me, so isomorphic to C mod two set. And uh, so the, the condition is, uh, the intertwining relation is uh, um, for this coefficients, A N of lambda is, uh, 
So here, so I have to look it up. A n of minus lambda. So they are coupled. Yeah. And uh, what is this? This is the quotient. Um, so now it goes by two. Okay. And uh, so this is the condition um, on uh, um, this intertwining uh, operators, yeah, because the intertwining operator act maps the k fixed vector to the k fixed vector. Um, so uh, this is much less complicated. Um, as it looks, and it is very abstract, can be made very concrete, I mean, in calculations. The point is, I mean, why I say this, I mean, some sort of for SL2, because this proof is in essence an SL2 proof, um, because in all intertwining operators, like the C function, there's a gindekin kapilovich formula. Um, when you set it up in the correct framework, I mean, some sort of this is a rank one result. It's, it's, it's in essence an SL2 proof, this uh, Schmidt thing. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, I haven't said this. I mean, in the abstract, I mean, this is joined with, uh, with, with, with Heiko, with Kimperlein and, and Schlichtko. Um, ah, yeah, and Job, Job is also in here, and, and Job card, yeah. So, um, so we did this, and this just appeared, uh, yeah, in this uh, new publication uh, from Cambridge uh, called the Cambridge Journal of Mathematics. I mean, I think it's just surfaced there, um, and um, yeah. So what is then the observation? The observation was, uh, and now what it was so surprising to me, I mean, when I first looked, so this is a, this is a test function here. So this is a test function. Yeah. So then this means uh, uh, a compactly small, and this is an analytic vector, yeah, so the k finite vector, yeah, so this is automatically analytic. Now look at the statement of the Pay-Levina theorem of Helgerson. It says, I mean, so these are vector valued functions, yeah, with values in the smooth vectors, but actually, I mean, so, um, what is it here? I mean, some sort of this is f of lambda. I mean, uh, this is pi lambda of f. So this should actually be an analytic vector. And um, this first then puzzled me, you know, some sort of then I thought, okay, so what Helgerson wrote down, I mean, is false. Yeah. Um, so I stopped. Uh, believing in that result. Uh, and then I looked at this proof and uh, uh, carefully and carefully, and um, no, there was no mistake. Um, and then I realized, I mean, some sort of uh, that this condition here, so this intertwining condition, yeah, so if you have something which is if you have something which is uh, lambda goes to f of lambda, which is vector valued c infinity yeah, on the circle, yeah, and which is Pelevina plus Pelevina, yeah, plus the intertwining condition, and this is the intertwining condition here. then this forces f of lambda to be analytic. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is, in essence, I mean, if you when you look at this, what, uh, uh, this was this observation in which nobody saw, I mean, up to this, up to this point. And uh, so, but, now the question is, I mean, so if I have the Helgerson's Pelevina theorem, so 
So I suppose, I mean, I, I have a parameter, so fix, fix a parameter. Lambda zero in C. So just a fixed principle series. And uh, um, and V is then to this parameter. Yeah, so, and we, we basically then pick here an analytic vector. In an can you, series. hello? Yes. yes. Ah, can you please stop in five minutes? It's uh, it's yeah, way no, past no, lunch time I'm, here. I'm done. I'm done. In, 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 yeah. In, all right. In, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I mean, I uh, so um, V is uh, then A N set to the N. Yeah. And uh, so now I want to write this um, as some. VK, yeah, and uh, at the point lambda zero, this is the Fourier transform of F at lambda zero. And uh, this means I need to interpolate, so I try to interpolate. Um, um, so I'm looking for a function a n of lambda, uh, which is in the Paley-Wiener space, to certain radius r, which I have to pick, yeah. So um, such that a n of this value lambda zero is just this coefficient what you want, yeah, and satisfies, I mean, this intertwining condition. And this is then, um, yeah. Um, an advanced exercise, I mean, in gamma functions and uh, von your variable calculus, I mean, and then if you do that, um, um, this is this condition, and then you uh, have to look for candidates, uh, what it is, I mean, this are variants of sine x over x, I mean, infinite products, which you cut off, um, there is some concrete construction. This I don't want to. Um, there's some concrete method to do that. And uh, um, this is the idea yeah, how to get that. And this is somehow the surprising result is uh, that this 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 Helgerson Paley Wiener theorem, um, which um, um, yeah, uh, seem to have nothing to do with analytic vectors. I mean, some sort of uh, um, implied the Helgerson conjecture. So, in this is what was uh, stayed undiscovered. I mean, so for 40 years, uh, uh, the relation of of uh, the the two big achievements of of Helgerson. I mean, uh, um, his uh, Paley-Wiener theorem and uh, his conjecture are actually related. OK, uh, very closely related. OK, this is thank you for listening so long. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Good. This is here. Desktop answering. OK, if not, let, uh, let's thank uh, Bernard once again. Uh, so we'll meet after uh, after lunch uh, at two thirty. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Sir, uh, hello, Bernard. Sir, close. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah, hi.